and welcome to my Xbox and me episode 464. I am one of your hosts, MC Fixer, alongside the one and only Two Fresh Crash. Crash. You know how much this podcast excites me, Fix? Not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. You wanna know why? Go on, why? It's just me and you being That's, intimate, folks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> me and you. Why are you gonna make it weird, bro? No, don't do that. I don't do to. that. I can't not do that. But it's a two-man podcast for the first time in a long time now. A long, long time. Yeah. Despawn took... and Matt both died. Yeah. Crazy. I, I was thinking about it, and like since Despawn's come on, yeah, like, we haven't really had a two-man podcast. Nope. And even then, they were kind of a little bit. Well, they had, you had the a couple of trips, Matt. didn't they? I had a couple of trips where they've had to do like a couple. You did a one with you and Matt and D Spawn. There's, there's been there's been a few here or there, but not like this. This hasn't happened in a really long time, um, which is yeah. interesting. It's interesting. Uh, if you don't know, this is my Xbox and me, our weekly Xbox podcast, right here on MXAM. You can check us out on youtubecom slash me. Uh, make sure you go subscribe. On the YouTube channel, hit us a follow over on the Twitch. Maybe drop us a follow on socials, Twitter, you know, Instagram, TikTok, all of those places. If you have accounts on those places, go and do us a favor. You know, drop us a follow. It don't cost a thing. It don't cost a thing. Speaking of costing money, though, if you want to support the show financially, head over to patreon.com slash MC Fixer. Get the show early and support us financially like a lot of people do. We do appreciate them keeping the show on the road. Big shout out to our Patreon producers this week. We've got the one and only Aaron God, as always, keeping the show going. And big shout out to our honorary member of Patreon Club uh, at the moment. we got Sam. So big shout out to Sam. Do appreciate the support, boys. Feels like we've... It's weird, because we've technically recorded our Hellblade 2 review discussion, has been recorded, which was recorded in place of the podcast, but then wasn't going to come out because of the podcast. And I was meant to have got that up by now, but haven't, because, you know, life, it, it should be out by tomorrow. So let's talk Hellblade 2, because, again, otherwise people are going to be like, you really just did an episode... Uh, the week Hellblade 2 came out and didn't talk about Hellblade 2. Kind of weird, guys. Kind of weird. So, Hellblade 2 is out. Um, it is currently sitting at an 81 on Metacritic, I believe. Um, it's a video game. Um, there's been a lot of opinions out there in the world when it comes to all things Hellblade and Xbox at the moment. Obviously, Xbox are in a very interesting place um and i think the showcase for that reason the showcase has got me extremely excited for that reason alone the showcase has got me excited because i'm like ha, you better put up or shut up now because oh. you're in trouble but hellblade 2 come out xbox exclusive uh for the time being i'm sure it will make its way to other platforms eventually um I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. Um, but we both played it. We've both completed it. Like I said, there is, there's going to be a, it's about a 40, 50 minute conversation. Um, our review discussion. This should be up tomorrow. If you listen to this, the day it comes out. Um, so keep an eye out on the podcast feed or on the YouTube channel for that. But we'll, we'll, we'll do a light conversation on it right here. Um, Crash, what did you think um, of Hellblade 2? I enjoyed it. I obviously had some issues we'll get into when we talk, like whenever you guys see the uh, review discussion. I think the further away I've gotten from playing the game, the better I look back at the game. I agree. And so for, for full context, we recorded it uh, literally a day after Despawn had finished the game. It was the day of I finished the game. And I think it was the day after for you as well, if I'm not mistaken. It was the day um, off for me Oh, day as off well. as well. There you go. So yeah, it was very, it was very much a, a conversation that was weird. For we hadn't, it hadn't been sat with us. We're right now. It's we we've, we've, we've sat with it now for, about six days, four 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 days, four five days, something like that. Um, yeah, I'm 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 kind of in agreement with you in a way. Um, I still have a lot of problems with the game. Um, and my big tagline, and you'll again, you'll listen to the review and you'll hear what I have to say about it in more depth. But my big tagline for the game is fantastic experience, okay, video game. Um, and I see a lot of people getting a little bit of pushback for that, and I, I don't think that's necessarily fair. I don't think they deserve the pushback. I've seen 
I see a lot of people clam on the game for only being five and a half, half hours long. It took me around six, six hours, six and a half, maybe a long push. Same for the boys, if I'm not mistaken. It was around around that. I have no problem with video games being short, but I guess the question I want to ask you, Crash, more is like, did Xbox deliver on what they were trying to sell to the Xbox audience now that we've played the game and experienced it? That's a rough one. Because I think partly the answer is going to be no, because they positioned it as the Xbox Series X launch exclusive, whether they said those exact words, the placement of the game, when they announced it, everything, sort of what it positioned on. And I don't, obviously, it, we're like so far into the Series X launch. I don't think you can say it's a success. And I also don't think the game has the broad appeal you would want, you'd say that game would need to have um as far as like if you're looking at a studio then buying studios giving the studios bigger budgets and more time to make the games they want to make but better i think they succeeded in that front if that's the angle you want to talk about the game from yeah it's kind of a multi-layer thing right because i, I i'm kind of agreeing with you it feels very much like if the idea was we're gonna give you not unlimited, but we're going to give you a war chest of money to make the most beautiful, art, artsy, crafted game uh, and the experience that you want to tell. They've delivered that. They've delivered that in abundance. They've hit the now out of the park. Audio, graphics, um, storytelling, you know, all of that, fantastic. But ultimately, the reason why I pick up a controller is to play the goddamn game. Um, and that's kind of where hellblade goes missing um in a way um hellblade 2 by the way sorry um so yeah it's i, I I'm, I'm in agreement with you it just we already knew it wasn't going to be god of war people wanted yeah. to try and pretend that it was going to be that but we on the podcast we were very clear i think the i think most of the xbox community knew that it wasn't going to be that um but yeah. i think a lot of people did try and have that conversation of like oh is this going to change the game like I, the, that's the one thing i will say I don't come away from hellblade 2 being like oh yeah man i've got so much belief in xbox now like that's not how i've come away from it and maybe that's not that's not what they were going for right um it just feels like a weird game where you've cl obviously closed studios lately you've opened another studio lately you've you've positioned call of duty black ops 6 which we'll talk about later on the show um in the way that you have and it's like hellblade 2 just doesn't seem like a game that should exist in xbox's portfolio yeah i think eyes on ninja theory for where they go after hellblade 2 well, the rumor is from Jess Corden, friends of the well, not friends of the show, I shouldn't say that. Uh, Windows Central. <laughs> yeah, do, do you know what it is? I'm used to like people that I do know being like, friend of the show. I don't know Jez at all. Um, but rumor is that they've already had their next game greenlit. Yes. So um, what does that mean? I don't know. They also have they're working on Morrow, if I'm not mistaken. That's the name of the yeah, game. Yeah, those lines. Yeah, which that I'd assume is gonna be on the more artsy side. Well, this other game because they not every game they make is on the artsy side they had why am i forgetting the name of the game right now the arena shooter fighter game it was a xbox series x early game or uh, no xbox that one that one you're not know about bleeding edge yeah that was them that was not ninja theory bleeding edge was ninja theory no that's wrong bleeding no edge. it wasn't it no 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 wrong. bleeding edge <laughs> Yeah, Bleeding Edge was Ninja Theory, bro. Was it? Yeah, Bleeding Edge. Bleeding Edge was Ninja Theory, yeah. It was made by Ninja Theory. Huh. Yeah, I had like... It, it, it irked me a little bit when I played Hellblade 2, and I was like, they kept this studio that made this game. And Bleeding <laughs> Edge <laughs> <I> closed. <laughs> I've walked away from it, and I don't hold that opinion, but that was an opinion I had for a moment. Got ya. Um... Yeah, yeah, they made they made uh, they made Bleeding I'll be Edge. Nice you, I forgot about Bleeding Edge. Bleeding Edge was yeah. was many many years ago now, and there was a game that a came and went. Ago. Came and went. Yep. Um, that was the epitome of what a Game Pass game was for Xbox then. Yeah. Like feeding, just, yeah. just feed it content, feed it content, feed it content. Um, yeah, like I say, well, I'm sure we'll have a deeper conversation with it afterwards. We'll have a review. This, uh, sorry, we'll have a spoiler cast about the game maybe at the end of the month. That's the plan. 
Um, yeah, I'm. I'm just Hellblade Two. I am super confused, happy, sad, angry, ecstatic about all of it. You know, I yeah. just, I just. I, yeah, I think it sits exactly where I thought it would sit for me, though, as an experience. It really, it really does. It didn't, it didn't blow me away. Like, you know, and I guess it's unfair. Like, so, it's so hard to like have a a. They have made a leap in graphical fidelity for yeah. gaming. Like, if you want to point at what what's the best looking game on console slash PC right now, you have to say Hellblade Two. Like, there's there's no way. Um, anybody should argue with that if you want to go to even audio design stuff like that, right? But yeah, man, the game is just it just isn't much game there. It just isn't much yep. game there. And the thing is, like, I think they were so close. If the game part of it was just a little bit better, I think the narrative and everything was so out of this world. Exploration that it as well. It up. I think just ex- giving me a reason to, have to actually explore explore that world. I understand the beaten path. I, I understand the story they were trying to tell, but that still sits with me today. I'm like, you didn't even give me a reason to want to walk around. Even if I'm not doing much, just let me walk around this beautiful crafted world that you've that you've made. Like. I'm kind of glad they had it as on railroads as it was. But that's because you just didn't like. Lo- I don't feel like you I, loved I, the experience. That's why. <laughs> Maybe. That's why I do. I do like if if because if you love the experience, you would want to spend more time in that world. Where you, correct me if I'm wrong, but you, it feels more like a case of like. I feel like this game for you was very much a job, where it's like, yeah. <laughs> like oh fuck, I have to play this one and I have to beat it so I can have the the full experience yeah. of an opinion like you wouldn't have beat this game if you weren't doing this podcast once a week with us and you know the community out there are going to ask for your opinion on it you wouldn't have beat it you would play two yeah. hours of this game and went well, like you did with the first game you would probably have got yeah. to that exact same point when i see what this game's doing it's not for me where yeah, me i, I really enjoyed it i enjoyed the game but the dumb damn puzzles the non the non exploration uh moments and then it's dull um dull combat is is what left us with the opinion i can tell you what we scored the game and um, we are working on some graphics and things like that i want to work on so people can get like a short version but we did score it as as my xbox and me as a as a team uh, we gave a hellblade or senior saga hellblade 2 a 7 so again go listen to the conversation so you get a more in-depth uh rand view um Maybe tomorrow, if you listen to this, the day of it coming out. But yeah, um, more to say on Hellblade, I'm sure, soon. Soon, soon, soon. Uh, should we jump into this week's dashboard? Yeah. Not a lot of news, to be honest with you. Kind of a, a, a terrible week to only have the two of us, if I'm being totally honest, because this, epi- this episode bit. could easily be maybe half an hour long. Hey, still an episode, so you better enjoy it. Um, Doom, the next Doom game. Uh, as leaked, uh, the next Doom game is going to be called Doom The Dark Ages. It will have a medieval feel, and it's coming to Xbox, Windows, and PlayStation. Uh, this was taken um, from Windows Central. Obviously, treat this with a rumor um, because nothing has been collaborate- uh, corroborated until we see it from xbox's mouth at the end of the day uh but the rumors rumors have been swirling for a while um, and this is on their need to know section on windows central uh rumors have been swirling for a while that the next doom from microsoft subsidiary id software is on the docket for an intimate uh intimate Im- oh, God, words. imminent imminent is the word i was looking for thank you reveal uh now uh separate reports uh we collaborated uh suggest the next doom is a prequel of sorts dubbed doom the dark ages um and they've also confirmed uh that it will be a multi-platform release on xbox and playstation also uh jez did uh confirm it on his twitter that the rumors are day and day like this isn't like mm-hmm. a month after this isn't like a six months after this isn't any of that this is a day and date um release so 
they start start with excitement levels for a new Doom game. Uh, Doom series you're interested in? You're gonna enjoy it? Just, no. Yeah. I so in the past I haven't like really rocked with it and stuff like that. Like obviously I understand like why they're great games, audio design, level design, all that stuff. I will say the medieval approach, depending on how they do that, is it just gonna be medieval times with a gun, or are you gonna be running around with like swords? Because I do think what I do think you have a sword in the last doom i'm not 100 sure about that um i think it could be cool to play a doom in that sort of setting depending on how it's done right i i like again i played the original doom and i even tried to play eternal as well not my type of game as again i i like it's weird right i like story driven games so like you know Give me, give me more gameplay like Doom, not in the same style, so don't think I'm being stupid here, but like, I need Doom with Hellblade level of storytelling. Like, that's what mm. I want. I, realistically, I want Uncharted, I want Tomb Raider, that's what I want. Like, <laughs> those are not the experiences we're getting, but yeah, no, Doom's not a, it's not a me game, unfortunately. Don't get me wrong, I will definitely check out a new one just to, to see what it's like, see, see the, um, see what the hype will be about. Doom always does really, really well um review wise from, from reviewers and the audience that love those games love those games which is amazing um but yeah shame a little bit of a shame for id i feel like this would have been a big moment for them at the showcase um shame for xbox that this is this is ultimately leaked um how do you uh, again your opinion on whether or not it's coming to playstation i don't really care about how do you feel? How do you think they will market this when it comes to once it's announced for Xbox Game Pass Day One, and then you know you know what happens in this E3 day where like we start getting more information and more information. Yeah. How do you think they're gonna deal um, with that? Like, do you think they're just gonna be upfront about it, or do you think this is gonna be a conversation that dra- drags out until the right moment? I think they're just upfront with it. I think maybe plans might have been different pre-leak but i think definitely since it's leaked like no reason to hide it um i also think with this game in particular because it falls in bethesda and i feel like they just would have been upfront with it i think they would have announced it i think the xbox showcase you wouldn't have gotten playstation anything on it but then whatever the official official trailer release you would have had a playstation logo on the platforms i think you would have seen that right away fair enough i yeah i mean i'm over my little sulk about games not being exclusive at this point it does feel weird that they just totally lied i remember when the statement come out being like the face of the games are going to be exclusive yeah there was that little bit of a conversation about like oh well legacy games will might we might still keep on other platforms which i guess this would fall into that category um with the previous doom games coming to playstation obviously um yeah man i don't know it's uh <laughs> it's gonna be interesting it's gonna be interesting to see how they do this how the xbox audience react to it um i think a lot of people are over it at this point they've come to terms with like xbox so. ra publisher at this point I think they, they happen to have our hardware as well yeah i think the people who are mad at it are now on platforms where they can play this game happily <laughs> Yes, I am. Um, <laughs> why are you calling me out? Don't call me out like that. Um, yeah, no, it's a, it's, I do think it's a shame though. I think it's a shame for it because I do think this would have got a bigger pop at E3 yes. with a, without knowing, I, well, I say E3, not E3, we'll call it, um, yeah. with nobody knowing about it. Not that we didn't expect it's, this, like the Xbox, remember that big leak? Like we, they, we knew there yes. was a new game on the, on the horizon anyway. Um, we didn't but know what still, it was called, but yeah, it's um, it does dull out the pop a little bit. But I think whenever you see Doom gameplay, no matter whether you like Doom or not, it always is a uh, a very very eye candy showcase sort yeah. of thing. So I think there'll still definitely be excitement whenever this does get shown. Yeah, no, I do agree. I do agree. Uh, moving on, Call of Duty Black Ops Six was officially shown off. Uh, they announced it on Twitter. Obviously, we all kind of knew what it was. Uh, a few of the leaks had come out, and it was very obvious, um, <laughs> even with yeah. their black bars. Um, but yeah, the big news of uh, about Call of Duty uh, Black Ops 6, other than the fact that it's Black Ops 6, is the game will be coming to last-gen console still. Uh, this is based on a leak. Um, I can't remember. Where, where, do you know exactly where this leak came from? Um, like, what store? It's like a... 
I'm gonna assume that it was probably GameStop. Uh, well, that's like what every I would assume. One of these leaks yeah. is GameStop. I would have assumed it is. This is kind of like the so the way they do it is like they they'll send imagery of like what to be expected coming up for the next holiday season and things like that. Um, and yeah, there's a picture here that, that's in front of me um, that me and Chris can see. And it's like uh, SKU, which was like the product number, description, platform, retail, and then street date. Um, and it, and yeah, it says Xbox Series X, PlayStation 4, and PlayStation 5. Um, street date to be determined. Um, all, re- all retailing at $70, by the way. Like, even the last-gen version. All, all. Do you... Do you think the last-gen version gives you access to the next-gen version if you put it in a next-gen console? Oh, I ain't got a clue. Possible. That would make a lot of sense. Yeah, that would make a lot that, of sense. that would be yeah. my guess, but I'm not 100 percent sure because I don't know how old gen releases work nowadays. Yeah, no, I I see. There's a lot of there's a lot of out outcry about this. I will admit, like in my at least on my on my Twitter page and what I'm seeing online, there are a lot of people quite upset by this, um, saying that Call of Duty has been held back, um, because of obviously still supporting, um, current or last gen generation consoles. I've got to be honest. I do, though I though I do agree, and I do feel like we probably should have moved on from the PS4 and Xbox One um, by now. And obviously for Xbox, which is the platform we cover mainly, right? They've got ways of doing this in terms of like streaming and things like that. So you would have thought, oh well, I can still play these games streaming ways on my older console. But I do see it from a point of view of like Xbox have just paid how much money for Activision, and they want to recoup that as quickly as humanly possible. And the amount of people that are still using PlayStation 4s, I'm not even going to talk about Xboxes, the amount of people still yeah. using PlayStation 4s, yeah, probably just for Netflix and things like that, but if this sells even a, a couple of thousands, which it'll be more than that, but you know what I'm saying, um, of copies, this is worth it for a business decision, decision from Xbox's point of view, right? Yeah, I mean, like, it would, I think it not launching on old gen consoles would have been a really weird move and potentially i like the reason being like call of duty is one of the most popular games it lives off of people talking about it playing it buying it fomo and if you have all those people who are only on old gen consoles what's more likely they're going to skip out call of duty this year and continue playing warzone that's available on their console or whatever call of duty um or are they going to go buy a completely brand new console and call of duty along with it i think they just skip out on call of duty this year i think it's i think you make some a good point there but i think it also comes down to microtransactions as well right like we're seeing games now the whole ever growing longevity the yeah. reason why fortnite is still fortnite's fortnite is because you can play it anywhere and i think that like, that's something that i think gamers are going to have to get used to at this point like you're going to see fifa or you know eafc um still come to those consoles and things like that so yeah i don't know man it's um it's definitely an interesting I- one is warzone 2 on ps4 it is right Yes. yes i would assume until there's a war zone or an update or something like that that the, that game's no longer on all gen consoles you won't get a call of duty that's not on those platforms you would imagine so yeah yeah no i'm i'm right there with you i agree i definitely agree um yeah it's uh it's it's bad news for people who want to obviously <laughs> let that old consoles die but it is what it is man it is what it is Next up, we got a few more rumors and potential leaks out there before we get onto some questions and get the hell out of here. Um, the rumor is, Crash, that the new Resident Evil is being remade, which we kind of already knew. Capcom have come out and said that. Um, but the rumor is that it is Resident Evil 1 that is going to be the next remake. Um, I've seen this going around in the Resident Evil community, which obviously I'm a big part of. Um, I think his name's Scully Gnome or someone like that. Um, Dusk, Dusk Gnome or someone like that. I think he reported on it as well. Um, who's like a legitimate Resident Evil leaker. Um, I might as well talk about it myself before we get to you. I, I'm super excited about this. Um, Resident Evil 1 is one of the best Resident Evil games to ever exist. Um, outside of obviously 2. And 
the fact that we got obviously we've already had a resident evil 1 remake but it obviously wasn't in it wasn't in the re engine first released exclusively on the gamecube um and then obviously it's made it way its way onto the 360 and the other xbox consoles which i bought it on every single one um <clears throat> but that's not the point of this conversation um i'm i'm excited to see what a resident evil one looks like in the re engine non-fixed camera angles which don't get me wrong i love the i love a, i love the fixed camera angles um but i think you can look at resident evil 2 resident evil 3 um resident evil village as well where they brought in the fix they brought in the um the changes first person to third person as well so you can play it in any way you want the xbox of uh xbox sorry that resident evil and capcom have moved past that like they don't need the fixed camera angles to make something scary they can do it with their world builds and they can do it with their graphics they can do it with everything so yeah man the rumor is that that is going to be coming relatively soon and we should see it relatively soon um, there's also more rumors out there about resident evil 9 setting and stuff like that but i'm taking all that with a pinch of salt at this moment in time um but does a resident evil 1 remake grand up like resident evil 2 remake excite you at all so yeah this is probably the most excited i've been for a resident evil game since i've played 2 remake only because it's probably the one that'll be the most like 2 remake i'd imagine because 3 was a little bit more action oriented 4 was Four's resident four. evil 4 <laughs> then uh <laughs> then you have 7 and 8 yeah uh, both are their own style so i think this is resident evil 2 remake being my favorite resident evil unless i'm trying to other fix and say that it's resident evil 5 or yeah. resident evil 6 or something <laughs> um which shout out to that that sold a million copies on the switch right that was the story that broke yeah that story broke mm -hmm. why are you, why is that reaction fix i definitely bought it so you bought it oh you're one of those one million people yeah i am uh but yeah uh resident <laughs> evil one remake i'm looking forward to it i'm looking forward to it i'm looking forward uh, to you looking forward to it like if they yeah there's a lot of things they can do with that story to change it as well. I really hope, like we've seen them do with two, with like the whole two characters, different um, perspectives. Obviously, uh, one is Chris and Jill. I really hope they change the stories. I, I don't think they will, and they're going to stick very close to the source material because they have to, in a way. Um, but I'd love for them to like really come at that that world and that story and that mansion in two different ways i think resident evil 2's biggest critique from the average resident evil uh, sorry from the non-average resident evil fan was there wasn't much there for replayability because you replay as a second character it is a lot of the same rooms there are a few changes here and there i'd really love to see what they could do with like maybe even making some of the locked doors just like you can't get in them mm. like and like don't get me wrong that frustrates you right on your first playthrough and then it has that eureka moment when it's like you find the key for that door when you're playing as the other character, which would probably be you're playing as Chris the second time round. Um, I think stuff like that would be cool. I would love to see the Crimson Heads um, stay in the remake. So if you don't know, um, in the remake, they made the Crimson Heads zombies. So these were the zombies that you killed. But if you didn't light them on fire, they would come back alive, but you didn't know when um and little Ooh. things like that because obviously the bodies stay around the mansion um and stuff because there's a lot of backtracking so you start avoiding certain corridors because you don't want to have to deal with them because you want to save ammo and things like that i hope they keep the crimson heads i really like that addition in the first remake um yes, yes it's getting confusing now because now we're talking different remakes um so yeah there's a lot a lot that can be done um with this remake and yeah i'm super excited for it i probably Probably the, you're, you're probably right. Probably the most excited I will have been since Resident Evil 2 Remake. Um, because 3, unfortunately, just didn't land the way I wanted it to. Not a bad game, if you really if you really think about it. Not a bad game, but just it coming out so close to 2 Remake and obviously it being such a such a different experience. It just, um, yeah. it's uh, I, I, I'm really excited. Really excited. Also excited for 9 as well, to see where the story carries on um now that certain characters are no longer with us so yeah, man, are you did that it. did that one change really just like oh <laughs> yes this bro the whole ending of village is very much yeah. like it becomes a resident evil game for me mm. 
Because there's, okay. like, there's a certain book that you pick up that starts telling the story of, like, Umbrella. Which, yeah. I, you got to remember, when Resident Evil Village got announced, I had all these <clears throat> hypotheses of, like, oh, my God, we're going to get the history of Umbrella. And we're going to find out that there's, there's, there's not just zombies, there's vampires, and there's this, and there's that. And there's this fact. Like, I went, I went mad with it. I went with my conspiracy theory. I had my tinfoil hat. It was crazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and, like, we didn't get that, but there was, like, a little book that you get at the end of that game as you're sort of finishing it, which starts giving you, like, what I wanted the entire game to be. Mm. So I'm really hoping, obviously, Chris is back, and duh, 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 and again, like I say, certain characters not around. Obviously, another character that I don't really give a fuck about, but hey, that's life. You've got to take the good with the bad sometimes. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm legitimately excited for the Resident Evil story again, you know, without a certain boring character that should never have existed that only existed because of vr i stand on that why okay <laughs> where did that come from well no because ethan's a faceless character right because resident evil yeah. 7 was made in vr so but it put you as the seven was Go on. but it was being made in first person yeah no 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 i agree but i f- i feel like it was heavily influenced by the fact that PlayStation were like, we're doing a VR. I think that's a tinfoil hat, mate. Tinfoil hat. Yeah. It's because you're meant to feel like the character. You're not, you're meant to feel uh, like the character, right? And I think that takes away from what Resident Evil is for me. I get that. And I could for sure see that. I think my counterpoint would just be at the time, all the horror games, all the most popular horror games, the people that think games people were talking about were all first person games. Absolutely. I think, I think Capcom are going to get a huge roar if they can day one deliver, which I don't know if they will or not, um, but if they can day one deliver, the game starts and they're playing it, the demo and it's first person, and mm. I click a button, you could be playing in third person, and boom, I think that's the instant moment of like, okay, everyone's getting what they want here. Yeah, you know, like the Do people you... that the people that want to play the play Resident Evil first person immersive they want to feel like the character blah 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 blah. they can have that and then people like me who enjoys resident evil for being a third person game they'll get to experience it that way and no one has to lose everyone's winning i don't think they'll do that i think it'll be first person again and then we'll get an update again because it gets suckers like me to play the game all over again I was going to say, one thing Capcom is actually like, pretty good with is post-launch support yeah. for their games, and that 100% feels like a feature that's like, it does. we might be able to have it, but I'd rather give a little bit more time to developers. I don't know how much changes have you done uh, Resident Evil 8 in first person? Yep. Does it change much, or is it just still relatively the same game? It's exactly the same game, but it, it's it. surprising how well it runs, considering, you know, a whole different camera angle is yeah. is a dust a drastic change yeah um for that's, a game that's i was curious for, I was like, for a game i don't know if they change anything, no, they right? no nothing gets changed it's just the camera angle that gets changed but it works so that's what i'm saying if they yeah. can if capcom can do that even with resident evil one could you imagine playing resident evil one and it becomes a first person and third person because that's enough of a change of like we've already done this remake we've already we've played this story that's... so many times that's, I think that's a whole new element because we've never played Resident that, Evil 1 in first person. That, if you want to do the play the game twice and have a somewhat similar story, playing it through it the first time in third person and then once you get to the second time, it unlocking first person for you or vice versa. Yeah. I think that would be pretty cool. interesting to give people like more of a reason like, hey, you can play it again. You're going to get like these tiny different story beats. The well, puzzles are going to be a little bit different, but you also get this whole new uh, camera think, angle to play I don't the game even think, I don't even think the puzzles will be different. I think it's just a case of you're, you won't see zombies from certain angles. You won't. So you're going to have more jump scares that will naturally mm. just occur. You know, like it's just stuff yeah. like that that makes the game that much scarier. So yeah, man, I'm, I'm super excited, super pumped with all the Resident Evil news coming out right now. And um, yeah, man, it's a good time to be a Resident Evil fan. Good time to be a Capcom fan, to be honest with you. Yeah, they've so. uh, uh, only one miss, really, Exo Primal. Mm, yeah, currently. Currently. And they got that weird space game, which we'll see where that ends <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah, currently. Currently, we give them the benefit of the doubt, but who knows? Who knows? Yeah. You know? Hey, f- can't trust Xbox anymore. Maybe we can't trust Capcom. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, next up. Uh, FIFA president confirming a new game is in development. 
And obviously, the rumor going around right now is that it will be FIFA 2K25. Uh, so quick TLDR for people who don't understand FIFA and things like that. Uh, FIFA no longer exists technically because EA stopped paying for the license. Uh, obviously, FIFA want that money and they want someone making a FIFA game um, so they can obviously live off of that brand recognition. Um, FIFA haven't had a real competition when it comes to a football game since Pro Evolution Soccer. I personally would say eight which was a long, 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 long Did time ago. Has come out like two oh, years no. ago or three years ago. Has comes out, but it hasn't had real competition for <laughs> yeah. a really, really long, 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 long time. Um, the biggest gripe that people have with EAFC is obviously that the grid mode's broken and uh, pro clubs doesn't get an update, and you know all these little things that like they just don't do. They don't make any changes in in the game. Does change? It's not a copy and paste. I hate when people say that about EAFC slash FIFA. Um, that's not true, but um, it's modes and stuff like that very much are in need of a refresh. As someone who plays 2K sports games as my casual everyday occurrence, NBA, um, Top Spin now, um, well, I don't think people quite understand what they're about to get themselves in for <laughs> when it comes to um, giving 2K the license. 2K are horrible when it comes to microtransactions. Yeah. I loved, don't get me wrong. Right. I play, let me make this perfectly clear. I have played 2K games. I have worked with 2K. I have, you know, I've done so much stuff around NBA and things like that. But their microtransactions are the most egregious thing in gaming. So there's two routes this could take, right? And I'm going to go with the nice route, the route that's not going to happen, the route that would be really good, right? Another FIFA game comes out, they see like, oh, we're in a, this place already has like its mainstay, right? That game's already over there. We have to be better for the players. We're still going to give you microtransactions. We're still going to do some of the oh, shady my stuff. Team. Oh, we're my team's gonna still going to be there. Yeah, yeah. we're going to be better for the player, right? We're going to be cheaper. We're going to give people more uh, packs or whatever. I don't know how yeah, that yeah. works, whatever the case is. Uh -huh. um, that would be the nice one, right? Where it's like, we're going to be very giving to the players who decide to dedicate Do you time. Know what? I think the other option... Let me let me interject really quickly. Keep keep that in your head, yeah? Keep it in your head. Because yeah. I think you're on the on the right track. Give me ultimate... Sorry, I punched my mic. I apologize. Give me ultimate team with a better gameplay loop for that and pack luck... Because this year's EAFC is too easy. Everyone's got a crazy team. There needs to be a balance between that, right? So give me give me a fair system. If you can give me a fair system, which NBA's ultimate team is pretty good. But okay. obviously it's NBA, so it's not as popular as football, you know? So I think they're going to nail that. But it's the career mode slash other modes they've got to get mm. right. I think that's where they're going to win over the players. And then obviously the most important thing, gameplay. Because if you can't get the gameplay right, it's over. It's dead. And that's what's yet to be seen. I think they're going to now... You, this first game they bring out, I think they're going to knock it out of the park. Yeah. I know the rumor is that it releases this year. Yeah. I would hope it wouldn't release this year. Oh, no. They've had plenty of time. It's been two... You think so? Yeah, two years. Okay. Two, two you years. Think they've been working on it for two years. I think they've had a football game in prototype for many a year. Oh, I got it. And now that FIFA was there, now was the, like, license, oh, the right license is there to like actually make this got happen. It. How do we apply the NBA logic to this? First, uh, maybe five years. First five years, we're going to be really nice because like NBA for the first 12 years was amazing. Like yeah. NBA all the way up to NBA 2K12 was a fun, enjoyable. Michael Jackson was always there, but it was still a fun, enjoyable experience. Until we got into this bloody, yo, what you've seen me play the game, like the big weld and driving around on a fucking skateboard. Yeah, that and all just that seems crap. so extra. For oh, it a, sucks. It sucks. It sucks. It sucks. Sports game. Like, I don't. <clears throat> like, part of me is like, I get the career mode and having it tied yeah. to career mode oh, where I you're love going that. around and to different gyms mm -hmm. and it feels like you're growing as a character. I think that's actually kind of cool. Yeah. But when you get to like the. Because that is the center for the whole game, is the hub world, right? Yeah. For everything else. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the the weird part. That should be like a side like career it mode sucks. thing where you're like, yeah, it sucks. Always online, you're like just just it's too. They've gone too realistic with it. But I digress. I think for the first five years, two K are gonna do a really good job. 
and then they're going to get a certain player. They're going to build up that player base. <clears throat> they're going to like, enjoy it, and then they're going to go, bam, here's the money. Give me that. Yeah. And because they're 2K, they'll know, get away I with think, it. I think what you can hope for is that 2K pulls enough players away from EA, where EA is like, hey, we got to be better to our players, and it's sort of a retroactive system. But what's probably going to happen is they're both going to be toxic, progressively get more toxic, as people double dip in both games and spend a lot of money. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for making me depressed, but I, I, I get it. I, I get apologize. It. Thanks, thanks. Mate. I apologize. Thanks, uh, last one we have here. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't even want to talk about it. I don't believe it's real. It's extremely, um, it's an extreme rumor that I think is utter bullshit. If I'm being honest, I'm trying to swear this. So bullshit was as close as I got there for you. Um, but the rumor, there's rumors out there right now that Xbox are considering to buy Valve. I don't think there's a chance in hell. Um, this happens. I don't even want to talk about it. I've lived through the Microsoft Activision saga for years. That's all I have to say on the matter. <laughs> if you think you want to add, feel free, but no. I have nothing to say on the matter. <laughs> I, mean, I don't think there's much, unless something comes out, out of this. I don't think there's much to talk about. I don't think this is true. I'm, what I will say is like, I wouldn't be surprised if Xbox has talked about buying Activision because Xbox probably talked about buying every Everyone. company because Xbox is so rich, right? Yeah, Microsoft. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, Microsoft. Um, um, yeah, no, I just... Yeah, I am... I, I didn't even want to clip bait with this one. You know? I was just you like... You could have. I could have. Oh, could've, could've been talking in the show. We could have made the help. Yeah, not interested. Not interested at all. Uh, this time with the fix a sack remember you can email in my xbox and me uh podcast at gmail.com uh also you can hit us up on twitter uh, at my xbox and me hashtag m x a m i'm at mc fixer crush is at crush neck plays feel free to send in any questions you have um you can quote retweet things and hit us up with like a question involving that it makes it gives us a little bit more context and things like that so feel free um, we love it when it happens, so keep it coming. Um, and obviously, last but not least, if you haven't joined the Discord, make sure you go and do that. Uh, first question comes from a good friend of the show, Origin Cookie Man, who says, from a, technolo- from a technological perspective, in your opinion, what would be the equivalent leap, um, i.e. from Hellblade 1 to Hellblade 2, in the Mario platformers and why? E.g. Super Mario Bros. to Super Mario 2 because. Can I change your question? I don't, I don't, I want to change the question and say it like this. What is the biggest leap you've seen from gaming like Hellblade 1 to Hellblade 2? God of War 2 to God of War 3. Ah, interesting. I think it like lines up pretty well with Hellblade. I don't think you get big changes in co- in combat and stuff like that. You mean but graphically, like the game jumps crazy. God of War. You're talking. You are 2. specifically talking God of War two to God of War three. God of War two to God of War three. Yeah, yeah. I just not three to Ragnarok. Two to three, where it's like gameplay relatively similar. It's visuals and stuff like that out of the park. I never played those. I never played those. Mind. Those. For the war games, I've only played oh, really good. the the new remake. Oh, you know those ones. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I knew you was I knew you was a big God of War fan. Oh, interesting. Um, for me, it's an interesting one because it's it's hard because of modern gaming, right? Modern gaming makes it that much harder for me. It's probably oof. Damn, it's a really hard question. I even made I made up the question and changed it and everything, and I still can't <laughs> answer it. Um, what's the jump? I don't know, man, because Hellblade is so good, and it's such a big jump. It is, like, it's such a drastic, drastic jump, but because it's not, like, from 2D to HD, or HD to, to, um, what do we go from? Like, um, AVG cables to HD, you know what I mean, sort of thing? Yeah. From polygons to, to where we're at now, like... It looks, it looks better, but it's not, like, the difference between, like, Final Fantasy yeah, 7 to Final Fantasy remake. 10, Remake, right? oh, 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 yeah, or 10, yeah, no, or 10's a better, no, 10, yeah. 10's, you're right, 10's a better example, yeah. And that's kind of where my head went to, I was like, oh, oh, Resident Evil, Resident Evil 2 to OG 2 to 2, it's like, it's not that, it's like, yeah, it's not that, um, but, uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, hmm, I need to sit with it a bit longer, or, Origin Cookie Man, great question. Maybe I'll try and bring I'll, I'll bring it back when Despawn and Matt are on and ask them. I'll keep this one here in the docket and I'll ask them as one. Well. Maybe I'll have a better answer. Because, yeah, my head's just going to a lot of old games to jump in where I don't think it's that. It's like a game that... Imp- a game that has a solid, solid start 
and then graphically just goes out of this world. Yep. There's not a, there's me not a lot to do it. Super, okay. Let me land. Okay. GTA 5 to Red Dead Redemption 2. It is that much better a game as an yeah. overall experience. World building is that much better. Uh, graphically is that much better. There's just so much to it. There's so much more I, you know to what? Red Dead Redemption. I think, I think what you do is very simple. Red Dead 1 to Red Dead 2. No, no, because I don't I think, think, I think that's even that's drastic. To... That's drastic. <laughs> I don't think it's that drastic. It's pretty much it's it's a sequel. I think a lot of the stuff's still there. It's just more technologically in depth. I think it fits better than GTA because those two are such different games. I think you're right with with. They are, but they're so similar as well, man. Yeah, but they're two. The, the similar stuff is just like the the. When you break uh, that game down mechanically, they're so similar, bro. Because I'm playing roleplay, like I can, yeah. like, and I play red like Red M, which is ro uh, ro um. Red Dead's roleplay, and he was like, God, this game is just so... It's on a yeah. different level compared to GTA 5, which is what gets me so excited, obviously, for GTA 6. I'm like, man, that game's going to be on a whole other level. Yeah. So, yeah, okay, we'll go Red Dead 1 to, to Red Dead 2, but I think GTA, but, you know, fine. I know where your uh, heart is. <laughs> Everyone knows where your heart is now. Uh, Angor writes in, uh, my best friend, says, uh, do you think people expected hellblade 2 to be a different game than hellblade the first one seeing as the first game was uh, more a oral slash oral. visual experience than a gamer's game no i ex think people expected it to grow and it did grow but not in gameplay also hellblade 1 is an incredibly niche game Yes. Not, incredibly might be a little bit overdressed. No, it it's is. a niche game. Yeah. I think more people have had eyes on Hellblade 2 than they did Hellblade 1. Because they and expected so I think it to not be as niche. Yeah, and so I do think there's people who have never played Hellblade, didn't really know what it was about or anything like that, who went into it with expectations, and those expectations weren't met. Um, and I think partly that's... I want to say partly that's on Xbox, but I don't really know what I don't Xbox think it could is. have done. I don't think it is on Xbox. I don't know oh, what they that's could on have the... done realistically. Well, do you know what they could have done? Unfair. They could have showed gameplay, which they did technically show gameplay. But that's yeah, the problem but... with a game like this, right? That's yeah. the problem with a game like yeah. this. They but showed you... gameplay. Yeah, and you would have wanted like a bigger like gameplay dive, but like it's not you a can't. long game to even give a 20 minute gameplay dive. Right. You, couldn't, you couldn't give 10 minutes. That's, a, that's such a big section that would be gone. You know, you're not yeah. wrong. So I, yeah, yeah I, I think it's, it's a rough one. spot. I, don't, that I, I think people, I think we even spoke about in the podcast, right? Like we were very much expecting a bigger leap in gameplay in terms of, it could have just been different puzzles and things like that. Like just something that was going to like groundbreakingly change the way we look at games and it and we and it did that from a visual and audio and storytelling point of view but it didn't do that from a gameplay point of view which is what lets down gamers so yeah uh last one uh comes from uh, sn snid snidge snidge sn mm. Crash so that's correct snidge? i think snidge yeah we'll I take it snidge. sure uh uh, stage 7122. How do you guys feel regarding rumors of the next gen Xbox console releasing in 2026? Do you think it's a good idea to release a next gen console before PlayStation? What do you think the chances of this actually happening in 2026? I think there's a good chance that it happens. I don't think it matters when they release this console. It's not going to be um the generations are different now the way we yeah. look at generations are different now the way we look at consoles are different now um they're so modular right it feels it feels very much like a you're making a jump for graphical fidelity or faster many... load times like a pc part right like if i put a new graphics card in my in my um in my pc i'm doing it for negligible differences it's because i like, because i'm a super fan and i'm like i really want a 49 and it's like well you don't need a 49 yeah but i want it and i feel like that's what this next console is going to be yeah how many people still have their ps4 right that's like 
but you also have a PS5. I mean, people are like strictly on the PS4. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yo, yeah. You, asked, you asked the question, I put my hand up. That's what I do, all right? True. I actually clarified. Um, I think the early release kind of is like, oh, maybe it's a 360 move from the previous generation. But when you look at that generation, people were willing to jump on the 360 because so many people had PS2s and they were already like ready for next gen. Oh. Right now, people are still at PS4s. And if they're looking at next gen, you're not necessarily going to get them coming over to Xbox. No. Not when with, they still have a leap to PlayStation. Not, not with what's going on in the world right now as well. Yeah. I just, I, I do think there's a chance it comes out. We already know the rumors of the console. We've seen that, obviously spoken about that. Um, Scarlet, I believe it is. Project Scarlet, if I'm not mistaken, is the code name for it. The cylinder that looked like a Amazon speaker. Um, yeah, no, I, I think there's some, there's some grounds to the rumor um and yes i do think sarah bond's already said there's something coming like we don't know what that is so there's something yeah. there's something coming um and how do i feel about it i feel the same if you've listened to the podcast long enough you're you should probably know now how i feel which is i'm not buying it like mm. my xbox and me will still exist and i'll still so, talk about xbox on a weekly basis but i'm not buying another xbox console because yeah. there's no I reason mean, uh, to anymore Xbox doesn't expect you to buy a console to be in their ecosystem anymore, no. right? Yeah, exactly. Um, there's been an interesting conversation going around about Xbox possibly like licensing off its UI and its system and giving it to other people uh, like Asus and stuff like that to build their own consoles, which would more than likely be more expensive. Do you think that's possibly where they go with that? Do you think not. that would get you excited? <laughs> no, it wouldn't get me excited at all. I think I've just yeah. I've come to terms with the fact that I'm I'm a PC boy now. You know? That's that's what I am. I I, I have a deep rooted history with Xbox and that will always be there, so I will always cover it. Um and we'll always talk about it, just like we'll talk about the entire games industry as a whole. But investing my money into Xbox things. I don't think that's a thing that will happen anymore for me. Now, if they send one over for review, we will happily review it um, and things like that. But I don't, I just don't see myself, I don't see myself pre-ordering pre two of these to make sure my fiance has one day one because we have to play games together. It's like, no, she's got a gaming laptop. Like, I don't yeah. need to do this anymore, you know? And they haven't given me a reason to believe in the ecosystem now for for a few a few months now with the decisions they've made nah i'm saying all this two weeks out from not e3 <laughs> everything could change <laughs> yeah everything could change they could announce a new xbox with it launching with fable and i'll probably buy the two of them and it looks amazing and da -da -da -da. you never I, know i think whatever xbox comes next i think having a limited edition mode for a version for a franchise i care about oh yeah would probably be the like most likely way for me to like guarantee that i'm upgrading otherwise it's very up in the air for right now great great but yes i can see it happening um i hope it happens i hope xbox is successful we need competition out there but not e3 will tell me a lot about where this company is going in the next five years if i'm honest yeah, I, I think their E3 presentation is going to be, or their not E3 presentation, it's going to be very, uh, very telling for them, even where their mindset is right now. Um, how many of game, how many games are we going to see that they've already shown off? How many games are we going to see at their showcase that are going to be on PlayStation platforms or even competitors in general, right? Um, and just overall their messaging with it, I think is going to all be very, very important. It's going to be a good maybe not a good year for xbox but a good year to observe xbox uh if they're not e3 this year although i do think it's gonna they're gonna have a good showcase they've had good showcases the past couple of years in general to be honest yeah oh no i've always walked away from it being like i'm excited yeah that looks good uh, da, 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 da. but we'll see we'll see we'll see yeah. Let's plug, plug, plug. Yeah, so that bit, Crash, Crash. Anything to plug this week? We got, we did, we did podcast reviews, Crash. We get anything? Uh, that's literally what I was going to check right now. Um, I'm going to go review the no. podcast. Remember to go review the podcast, guys. Come on. Could you like just it? haven't like the. No, it's still December 9th twenty twenty three. 
from Premier Silver, five stars, mad toxic. Post sounds like an IGN comment section. <laughs> Last review we've gotten over here. Yeah, can we? Can someone in America please, please change that? Please, please. I'd really appreciate it. Yeah. I'd, I'd really appreciate it. But, you know. <sighs> Beggars can't be choosers, they say, Crush. Beggars can't be choosers. Yeah. Uh, I've got nothing to plug, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I am back with Ubisoft, so for people that missed that news, I've officially signed back with Ubisoft, so you can catch me live over on their channel streaming a bunch of different Ubisoft games. Um, yeah, and um, I guess we'll leave it there until next time. Look out for the... Uh, I guess look out for the review discussion for Hellblade 2. So yep. and let us know what you think of that when that comes up. Uh, until next time, we'll love you, leave you, see you all later. Goodbyes.